at the very very start of the video it's either a couple frames before the video starts or a couple frames after it starts it's just me like this on yeah, the camera i have, I have a picture of that because yeah. i was like that's too good it was to funny it was hilarious all right are you ready to rock and roll i think so yeah. i think so week six eh <laughs> Week number six. Well, guys, welcome to week six of Young Men, the podcast. We're glad you guys are here with us this week, and we are equally as excited this week to oh, be yeah. here with you. Um, this week, we're going to be talking a little bit about happiness mm -hmm. and kind of defining that for you guys and taking a look at what it means to kind of chase our potentials as men and how that ties into happiness and possibly chasing the wrong things and yeah i think it'll be fun and hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as we do yeah um in the last week or in the last few weeks i guess we've been talking about men's roles in society and that goes with in a family as a father or a husband and in dating relationships as well as your role in your community and being single and so now we're kind of going off those defined roles and kind of going into the aspects of what men should expect in life and maybe the ways we should proceed with our lives because we know that life isn't easy yeah and so we're just trying to navigate it with you guys here and so the first one like caleb said we're gonna be talking about what it means to be happy yeah well i think me and brian have discussed with you guys a lot about what it takes to be a man the kind of roles that that or the way that those roles play out in life but it then it goes to the next step it's like okay but what is what does that look like you know what do I chase if I'm supposed to be a man who's supposed to be providing and stuff like that? You know, how do I attain this level of, you know, happiness for me and my family? And is happiness really something that we should be chasing after? Is that really the ultimate goal to be happy um, or uh, the, the American dream, as we talked about earlier today, if you want to tell them the quote. Well, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, there we which go. Which was... Uh, from the Declaration of Independence, and it was written by Thomas Jefferson. Um, but that the pursuit of happiness came from the philosopher John Locke, which lived like 70, 80 years prior to that. Um, but that was the, the Declaration of Independence. That's, that's what the states stood for at yeah. the time, was, was life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and that's honestly the idea that I think a lot of us still have here, even in, in Canada, uh, we we still have that understanding or that idea that the pursuit of happiness is the goal that we achieve yeah. in life. And if, if you guys have ever watched the movie Pursuit of Happiness, great movie, would definitely yeah. recommend you watch him pursue happiness by getting a better job and pulling himself out of the rough and uh, and making more money. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a lot of good things in that movie. And I think there's a couple things that we need to be wary of and that are over romanticized yeah. often in movies like that. Yeah. Def so definitely here, we should then define what happiness means. So, I mean, we, we each probably, everybody probably has their own definition of what it means to, to feel happy or be happy. But if we're just going like strictly kind of like definition, I think it's like pleasure and um, a satisfying experience. That's like what happiness is. And like we all have experiences with being happy. Um, one time that I think about being happy, I mean, there's obviously there's bountiful amounts of experiences. We live in a very um, a culture of first world society that yes. presents us with many, many, many opportunities to experience temporary happiness, no matter really, I would say, what kind of tax bracket you find yourself yeah. in even as one of the more poor people even homeless people here your opportunities to experience happiness are significantly higher than a lot of third world countries yeah we're definitely fortunate here yeah and and definitely like i understand that not everybody has the same life that we've lived and we've lived a very privileged life and and i understand that i'm yeah. i'm very aware of the situation that i was born into i'm very very thankful for it yeah um but i'm aware that not everybody comes from that kind of a situation but i'm i've been around a, a lot of the the lows that this city has to offer no i have not lived in it but i've i've helped in um some youth centers and some stuff where i i've seen and heard some pretty uneasy stories we'll put it that way to, yeah to put it very lightly so Though I have not experienced it and do not have firsthand experience with a lot of it, I have experienced or heard of the experiences. And I've, I've actually, I've gone on some mission trips. I've been in Mexico in some slums and stuff like that where I have had the 
um, experiences happen around me firsthand. The worst of them, no. Uh, I've just seen what people live through firsthand. So Yeah, yeah there's definitely, all across the board, people have different um, perspectives and and situations that they'll deal with. And yeah, I, that's what I was trying to say is fortunate. That was the word that yeah. I was chasing after there was like, we were very fortunate. So I've had lots of experiences being happy. One specifically is after we graduated high school, this is a couple years ago, we went on a lake trip with our friends. And so, yeah, we were invited to the lake and then we spent time like playing cards and, you know, watching movies and just like playing cornhole and spending time on the boat. And I don't know, I was telling him earlier, I don't know why, but a lot of the times I think about being happy, it's on a boat. I guess I just love being on a boat in the lake. It just, it's a very serene experience. But I remember it was later in the evening. And so we kind of had all our high energy stuff and now we're kind of mellowing out and the music is playing on the boat. It's a little softer and I'm just sitting on the back of the boat and I'm just looking on the sunset, it's just the beautiful orange purple and just hearing the treading of the waves. And I just remember thinking in that moment, I'm like, I am like so very happy. And I'm going to look back at this moment and I'm going to think that this is one of the most stress-free times I've ever experienced. Yeah, it was, I, I was there with him and, and I had a little bit of a different experience, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. It was, it was a time in our lives, whether or not I want to admit it, that was very carefree. We were coming to yeah. the end of high school and I, some of us had jobs lined up, but some of us didn't. Some of us were already working. Yeah. Um, uh, me. <laughs> but it, it, it really, I was still living at home with my parents. And at that time, you know, there I wasn't, didn't really have a lot of costs. And so I was just kind yeah. of working and I had big plans for my life still back then. And there was, there was a lot, a lot going on and we had a lot to be thankful for and almost no issues, not a, yeah. not a care in the world as some would say. Right. Yeah. And so it, there was, there's definitely like, you can understand why you would have felt that way. Yeah. Um, for me, it was definitely a bit more of a different experience. And I, I think this is imp- important to keep in perspective. Uh, as men as we go through the world is keep in perspective of what's happening to the people around you while you're pursuing this happiness and not that that brian really had anything to do with my downfall that weekend me and (laughs) me and my uh my ex-girlfriend we broke up twice kind of before we broke up and uh, the first breakup that we had only lasted about three hours (laughs) and uh it had happened the previous weekend and we had agreed to temporary terms of dating where we were going to spend the summer together. So it wasn't awkward with our friends because we thought it would help a lot. And um, it didn't. No, <laughs> it was it was a pretty miserable weekend for me because I spent it with I, I, I got to spend it with my friends. So, yeah, there was definitely some good things about it, but it was definitely very, very stressful for me because, again, as you guys have already heard, it was kind of my life plan and it was falling apart in front of me. And so while everybody was out enjoying the lake and the the weekend, I was starting to fall apart on the inside. And it yeah. uh, it was what eventually led to my year and a half, two year long kind of downward spiral. Yeah. But that's the thing is like, obviously, that's kind of the th- like we were all going to be in different spots, right? Like I was at a point where I was like, I was very happy, you know, I was like feeling good. And then obviously your situation was turning sour and then continued to turn more sour. And so that goes into, should we pursue that level of just being, I want to be that happy state all the time. I want to just feel so good. What are your thoughts on that? Well, personally, I would say no. And uh, I think it has a little bit to do with that is one, we get lost trying to chase it. You hear, you hear stories of, you know, big celebrities or, or just, just, you know, stories of people around you. I guarantee you, if you ask around of, of a, of a husband or a wife who left their family to pursue their career goals, cause it was what was going to make them happy. It was going to be the difference maker in their lives. And when you ask those people, Nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, they will say that that was one of their biggest regrets was leaving that kind of life behind. Now, it's not always a super healthy situation. You have to play those kinds of things by ear. I can't speak into everybody's specific situation here. We we have to play by general rules. But yeah. generally speaking, you aren't going to find too many guys who have a better life or aren't living in denial of what they've left behind. Yeah. Part of that is actually, I wanted to bring up, we both watched 
the Veritasium video. He, so if you don't know who Veritasium is, um, he produces a lot of educational content and involve very different areas. You know, he, he graduated with actually the degree I'm getting in engineering physics, but um, he then got his master's and whatever in like education. And he, uh, he produced a whole bunch of cool videos, but this specific one, he did a commentary on the longest running study on happiness in which Harvard looked at, um, I think it started, what, what started in the thirties? Yeah. Ni early 1930s or mid 1930s. Yeah. So it kind of like at the brink of the depression. So it took those kind of children and then looked at them for, I think like 70 years yeah. and kind of like tracked their happiness throughout. And like John F. Kennedy was one of these people. Um, there's a couple of Nobel Prize winners. And what was interesting is that at the very end, when they would ask people who are in their 70s and 80s, or yeah, their 70s and 80s now, um, the things that they most regretted and the things that they found most valuable and that made them the most happy in life, none of them, none of them said that any accomplishment that they had is what made them happy. None of the Nobel Prize winners said that winning the Nobel Prize was the highlight of their life. Nobody said that their career winnings were the highlight of their life. Everybody stated that their value came from being a father, their wonderful marriage, you know, the people they knew, the things they, they experienced and the people they saw. Um, and their biggest regrets were actually that they spent too much time working and not enough time with their families. Yeah. And, and if you ask a, a lot of the older generation, this even today is th that's what they'll tell you, especially the ones who have messed up the ones that are the happiest still are the ones with family around them but you see all of these uh older folks in the in the care homes nowadays and and I, like i've been to them and stuff and, yeah. and they're just they're so sad like their families don't come and visit them their children have moved on or moved away and like what what happened to us as men taking care of our families um and not pursuing this selfish idea of happiness and i think one of the the biggest problems with all of these things that are tied to happiness is that happiness is fleeting yeah. like it's so so fleeting one of the one of the stories that we have that we have had like uh was also in our grade 12 year it was uh, a couple months before this last trip that happened we went to edmonton with our church youth group and we, uh, we, uh, us and a couple of our, our best friends, we had a group of six at that time, yeah. decided that we were going to stay a couple extra days by ourselves. We were 18 now, you know, it was yeah. our first trip. We could drive vehicles by ourselves. We didn't have limits of who could be in the car and that kind of stuff. Like it was exciting. It was a fun part of life, right? Like there's so many things to look forward to when you're, when you're that age, even when you're our age still, I know we're being a little bit ridiculous here, but you know, that's kind of when we look back, that was like the time that we had, everything was kind of happening right then. Yeah. And we started to settle into adulthood a little bit more now, but that, that was like, that was the transition period. That was like the earliest stages of it. And we looked to, the, to those times and, and we ended up staying uh two, three extra days in Edmonton. Not that it really matters, but uh, it was just a really good time. We went to the West Edmonton mall together. We ate good food. We stayed in Airbnb. We played, we played video games late into the night with our buddies. Went bowling, went yeah. swimming, did mini golfing. Yeah, just so much, so many fun activities, so many yeah. activities that make you happy all yeah. in one weekend. And then on the car ride home, we're, uh, <laughs> it was the first time we had any idea of about this podcast, actually. Yeah, that was when the first time because we talked for like, so Edmonton, from to, like if you aren't from here, Edmonton to Saskatoon where we are is about a five and a half hour drive or so give or take how fast you're going but just generally speaking so like for the first 20 minutes we'd talk about like oh we had so much fun doing this so much fun doing this and for like two hours we just talked about life yeah. just everything to do with like our relationships and what we thought about things um and then we after that there's like a like little five second minute silence and we're like we could have just clipped that and posted it online like it was just so full of like just the it's depths just, of what we were thinking yeah it was it was fun it was an enjoyable time yeah and yeah little did we know it would actually happen one day mm -hmm. obviously with only a, a third of the group remaining <laughs> what happened was we experienced all of these moments of happiness yeah. and it it should have been such a high we had no cares in the world and then i ended up getting into i, I mean there was a couple of us involved but the main fight was between me and and one of my best friends at the time, I won't say his name for privacy sake, but 
we ended up getting into a, a fight and he got really, really upset at me and justifiably so now that I know what happened. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we didn't really ever speak again. Yeah. So it went from a group of best friends, the six of us, to only three of us now being friends still, um, all in, in the matter of a few minutes. And so when I talk about happiness being so fleeting, I, I refer to moments like that because... Man, we were 18. We had no cares in the world. We're 19. We still don't have any cares. Like, yeah, we're starting to get there. But realistically speaking, very little on our hands right yeah. now. And how I just it's incredible how you can go from such a high to such a low all in the same day. And it, I mean, that day was only the beginning of the end of our relationship. It, it, it crumbled pretty quickly after that. And yeah. You could chalk it up to a thousand things, but at the end of the day, it's just incredible how fleeting those moments were because we were no longer concerned about this amazing weekend we just had together. And we instead had to let this thing get in the way of our friendship. Uh, and it's just, it's sad to see because at the time he was one of like, he was, he was my, he was my brother, man. Like I love that kid. Yeah. You know, we had we had shared a lot of good experiences together and it sometimes still makes me sad. You know, I, I miss him from time to time. And yeah, um, and, and he's moved on and we don't we don't speak anymore. And we really for like a month, maybe we kind of spoke after and then that was it. Yeah. But when I talk about happiness being fleeting, like that's what I mean, guys. You can be having a great day on top of the world. Like yeah. On top of the world, like it, it happens to me on my way home from work some days. I have a really good day at work and I'm yeah. like excited to get home and something. And then obviously now I'm living the country. It's not as much of an issue. But yeah. while I'm in the city, you drove home and you get stuck behind some stupid idiot that's driving in front of you. And you just want to lose your mind. Yeah. Like you're just pissed off. Like sometimes right pissed off. I know that we all get that way sometimes. Yeah. And it's like. How can how can something so good that happened either good news or a good day or just anything like that happen five minutes ago five minutes ago yeah and now you're driving in traffic and you're pissed off and then sometimes we let the rest of our day be ruined by that five minutes in traffic and we forget just how good our day was before yeah that. well that's the thing is that happiness like you were saying is so fleeting because it can just disappear like that like it doesn't take much all it takes is something to flip your mood the other way. Um, but that's not the only reason happiness has this fleeting effect. Um, there's actually, we were talking about, there's neurochemical reasons for this. Like, I think it's, it's pretty well known now that dopamine is like your happiness hormone chemical. And you can actually build up a tolerance to things that make you feel happy. You know, when you are constantly pursuing that idea of like, oh, I just want to feel good. And you are playing games or going to certain, a bar or something. Those effects wear off. And so you can either try doing those things more and more to try and get the feeling or start or people will start doing things that are more extreme. You know, some people start like to give the extreme example. Some people start like taking drugs and that kind of stuff. But then some people just start changing a different avenue or taking a step back and then going back into it. And the problem is if you are trying to chase happiness, you can never be satiated. Yeah, you're going to you're going to end up empty because it's always going to leave you, whether it's it's something like drugs or it's something like I know. Most men struggle to some level pornography yeah. and uh, that is something that quickly, quickly eats at your dopamine. You get a hit once and twice and three times and then you guys know and like <clears throat> you don't have to talk about it out loud. I would encourage you to get help with these kinds of issues. It's really the only way to get by them. I, I know from firsthand experience and um, it's just it's incredible how quickly leaving that in the dark eats at you and you yeah. end up just, you know, down a first it's, you know, pictures and then it's videos and then it's more intense things. Like yeah. as we let our, our mind swirl deeper and deeper into the gutter and I'm sure one day we'll have a whole episode on that kind of stuff. I, I need to talk about that with you guys one day as it was it's one of the issue. main things that eats at men these days and destroys us so yeah we've talked about how there's this like there's this fleeting effect or there's this tolerance effect that happens with respect to happiness right you become 
less um, receptive to things that make you happy, the more involved you get in it. And that's why we can't chase happiness. And you can chase a happiness in a lot of ways that's very damaging to to both your, your mental and physical health. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, McDonald's is good every once in a while, unless you're me and don't like McDonald's. But like fast food, for example, yeah. is good every once in a while. We enjoy it. But if you're doing it all the time, just because it makes you happy yeah. to be um, fat – it's not good. There's no, there's nothing. One of the big things that that study pointed out uh, that we talked about earlier was how better physical health leads to uh, better mental health, leads yeah. to a longer lifespan, and leads to a happier life. Yeah. It is studied over and over and over again. I do not care who you are or what you say. You're wrong if you think being fat is okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. The problem is, is it's not like fat has become such a buzzword where it's like either people will cheer you on and say, yeah, you're nailing it on the head or people will demonize you and say that you're body shaming people. But the reality is, if you want to use more, a little bit more um, terms that aren't as buzzy, you know, just saying like overweight, being yeah. overweight as in. You know, there's certain indexes that say like there's like you can go to your doctor and they will tell you for your height and for your um, whether you're a man or a woman, they will tell you what kind of range of weight you can be in. And if you're above this range, it is unhealthy. If you're below this range, it is unhealthy. You want to be healthy. Yeah. A healthy body leads to a healthy mind. Yeah. And, and realistically, guys, like you don't really need a doctor to tell you no. that. You can tell when you're a little bit overweight. Like Brian... Is probably a little bit underweight from yeah. where he sh he Just should be, bit. and I'm a little bit overweight for where I should be. Like we could both definitely be better. And now I don't mean you have to have absolutely shredded six pack abs, but before I went on this rig trip a few months ago, I was 205 pounds at five foot eight. Like yeah. I was overweight. I didn't look good. I was unhealthy. You don't feel and good. I didn't feel good. And now I'm. When I came back from the rigs, I was almost 30 pounds down. It was kind of, you know, <clears throat> I didn't mind where I was at, but it also wasn't super good. I'm 10 pounds up from there. Yeah. So I'm sitting at about 180, 185. And do I have six-pack abs? No. But am I obese? No. Mm -hmm. Could I cut a few pounds? Yeah, probably. It would be yeah. just fine. And and, I, and I, I'm trying to, actually. I, I aspire to. I moved out here, and I've... I've done meal preps and I've planned and I like, I'm going to try to become more healthy. Yeah. These are important things to do. Uh, like he said, just a healthy mind, he goes, healthy body and a healthy body is a healthy mind. Yeah. It's, you, you need both. Yeah. It's reflected. They reflect in each other guys. They yeah. clearly reflect in each other. Well, the mind has the discipline to get you to exercise and then the exercise like feeds back to you like endorphins are another chemical that is so beneficial for you that's like when people exercise and then feel good yeah. that's because of endorphins the endorphins are what makes you feel like on that little bit of high like oh like i feel accomplished and relaxed and a little bit more stress-free that's endorphins um and so the exercise is good but you said right before that you were like there are there are negative things to chase when being when going for happiness and the biggest one that literally everybody talks about everybody knows is money is when you chase money there are the people who will die hard and say money doesn't give you happiness and there are people who are die hard and say that money is like the only thing that will give you happiness yeah. and there's a little bit of leeway here but for the most part money does not give you happiness in that study that we're talking about again we're referencing this a lot because it's the longest running study on happiness to be done ever yeah and and besides us being being christians here we're gonna we're gonna talk about our views on that in a little bit but we we want to pre present you guys with the secular argument yeah. for this like it's not just a biblical argument it's a secular argument there's many many studies that back up what we are saying here on this podcast yeah so. but going into that that study about what does money do to happiness well what they found was that money increases happiness to a degree but then there's a threshold they said that the average kind of income that you need to make to that where your happiness no longer increases yeah, or, with the more money you make yeah, yeah. That, that's what they were saying there is about seventy five thousand dollars or in other words like here that's american so here in canada you'd be looking at like eighty some thousand dollars 
whatever you need in order to pay your basic costs of living as humans, okay? So we're not talking about big fancy houses or anything like that. So we're talking about a normal house in a normal neighborhood costing a normal mortgage, right? So we're talking probably an average house nowadays is three hundred to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Some somewhere in there I would say. Yeah. From my knowledge of the market, which is limited, mm -hmm. uh, be that. Uh so you know, after a down payment, you you have a certain amount of month that you have to pay off every single month. And so if you can make enough to buy groceries, pay for your car loan and your house loan, and then have a bit of money left over for all the other expenses. I know there's more expenses than that. I'm aware. Yeah. Okay. I pay for them, but those are your general, your yeah. overview. If you can afford all of that and still have a few hundred bucks left over every single month, which is... You can do on $85,000 Canadian oh, a yeah, year. Yeah. It's more than possible. I know people think that it's impossible to do that. Yeah. It's more than possible. Um, if you can do that, then beyond that point, beyond that, your, your stress-free money zone, you, that means you've got money in the bank, you can pay your bills. Yeah. Okay. There is no more real peak to, to happiness. And yeah. So, the only thing that I said that makes any kind of a difference in that that fact was how happy you were previous to having that kind of money. So your ability to be happy, uh, no matter the circumstance, which isn't happiness, and yeah. we'll get into that in a second, is actually kind of what determines if money is going to make you happier or not. So say you're a fairly unhappy person and there's not many things that you enjoy, then if you get more money, it actually, the study shows that you'll be less happy yeah. the more money or you have. There's after almost that. like no, no correlation between happiness and money, nope. no matter how much you have on the line. None. And, but whereas people who were super happy with a little bit of money before that will be a little bit more happy the more money yeah, they there's make. There's a positive correlation. Yeah. But it's very, it's very minimal. Yeah. Uh, no matter what side of that line you're on. So from all this, where it's, you know, if you're happy beforehand, you get, a little, you get some money, more money. Now you're a little happier. But if you're not happy before and you get money, you're still not really happy afterwards. This kind of shows that money doesn't play a significant role besides allowing you to live a little bit more comfortably. Besides that point, money doesn't play a role in happiness. And, and you can take money out of that equation if we didn't have it and say, if you have your basic survival things taken care of, food, water, shelter, family, you're yeah, set. Essentially, That's your baseline. Yeah. If you can cover your baseline as a human and survive, you're not going to get more happy the more money you yeah. make. How I interpret it is there's a financial stress that happens in life, you know, when you have a mortgage and all these bills, like there's this pressure that you need to make money. That's where that lack of happiness comes from. Yeah. But once you surpass that, I'm no longer financially stressed, there isn't a lot of gain beyond that. And so to kind of get off this money aspect, we want to talk about that happiness before money, where those people who are happy before and are happy after, they have the most to gain. We don't think it is very useful to declare it happiness because we talked about how happiness is defined as this feeling of satisfaction or pleasure momentary right? which is momentary whereas what we like to we like to refer to this uh sense of happiness that is long lasting no matter the circumstances as they change change we like to refer to it as joy yeah and they're they're different things both in the dictionary and to us personally we have yeah. our own personal opinions on them and so we, we, we define happiness, as he said, as that fleeting, momentarily, momentary joy. But joy is lasting. It is not fleeting. Yeah. It doesn't go away whether you're at a high or a low. It's a constant. Yeah. It's this constant that persists besides suffering. Because here's like the thing is, is one of the things that I wanted to reference here was, um, in, in the Bible and even today, there are people who are persecuted for faith, right? Like that's just something that, that happened. It happened in the Roman times when people were following um, um, 
what was happening and that other people were denying them and this, these kinds of things. And people were being persecuted. Now, these people were, they actually were glad to be persecuted for that cause. And there's other causes too, where people are, are like, quote unquote, happy to be persecuted. But that isn't really make sense with our definition of happiness. How could you be happy to suffer? And this is where this is actually something we refer to as joy because you are experiencing the sense of hope and fulfillment that goes beyond your present circumstance. So outside of um, religious kind of joy that, that we find in, in <clears throat> sacrificing part of our lives for what we believe to be a greater good, uh, the, the other places you can kind of find this would be in as men in in our roles as men you hear us talk about family a lot and so when you provide for your family when you live for something greater or bigger than yourself that's where you're going to find that joy and that hope because you're living for something that is outside of your control so if you're contributing to it you can feel good knowing that no matter what is happening in your life, you're doing it for a reason. So when you have a family and work sucks, you're making money so your kids get fed, so your wife gets fed, so you guys can live a good life. Um, when, you're, when you're a Christian or if you're a Christian, you know, you're, you're living for something greater than yourself. You're sacrificing your time, maybe your money, maybe your resources. Uh, in order to give it to other people at no expense to yourself and with no uh, idea or no expectation rather that that money or that time or those resources are ever going to be returned to you in any way. But we live as we live and give freely of ourselves so that we because we feel we're accomplishing something greater than ourselves. We feel that we're giving to people something that cannot be achieved by the human measures of happiness, something that is everlasting and something that is eternal. Yeah, that is super beautifully said. <laughs> um, something there um, that you're touching upon is giving something of yourself to other people. And it's probably the last time we're going to reference it. But again, that long lasting study, what they found is that the most important thing was people's relationships. And so investing your time into people actual human relationships you know not just online i know like there's lots of people and even us we've had friends online on games that we would talk to and we're like yeah they're my buddy but it's not the same you know they showed that just sorry to cut you off no no, no. Cool. um just um from 2003 to 2020 the people's time spent as far as human interaction with their friends went from 60 minutes a day to 20 minutes a day that's literally that's one third of what it used to be and that is, they've shown significant decline in people's joy, right? In people's satisfaction and contentment with circumstance with a decrease in human interaction. Yeah, and especially in younger people. And we are the ones who have these yeah. online friends and stuff like that. But guys, think about how many times, like I know, um, like I've been really big into certain games in the past. I've had buddies that I've played, um, say, Rocket League with. And I've played Rocket League with these kids for five or six or seven months in a row. Yeah. And like I got to know these people. We talked about life. We talked about issues. Like we we talked to each other about problems that we were having. Yeah. And like we got what we thought was a real connection. And then one day I go, okay, I got to wake up. I got to quit playing video games as much. I got to stop doing this. And yes, I still play video games from time to time. Don't hear, I'm not a saint. I didn't just quit. I'm not cold <laughs> turkey on that stuff. <laughs> but I've gone from several hours a day to a few hours a week maybe. Yeah. If that, some weeks. Sometimes they're too busy with the podcast. But <laughs> um, it, it's, you go you from them. And, and like, yeah. I don't, I barely touch Rocket League. For there was like three or four months here that I have, cold turkey didn't play the game yeah and so those people that i'd been talking to for a year and stuff like that just vanished yeah. Yeah. there's nothing they can do to get into contact with me i never gave them any of my information i know that's different for some of you i have one friend that i've made from playing a mobile game that i still talk to to this day yeah and 
it is a good friendship and it is a healthy friendship. But again, we've never seen each other. Yeah. And so we don't get to enjoy each other's company. And, and that can be really, really hard. But we we never really established a really good relationship. So even if I don't talk to him for a few weeks, I don't even like think about it sometimes. Yeah. Out of, so, it doesn't out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. And it's, in, I do try to stay in contact with him because he means something to me. Yeah. Uh, and I should, but again, online relationships are really hard to have meaning. It's super hard. Yeah. Whereas in person face to face relationships, that I have with with Brian and stuff like that. Like when I was going kind of in a downward spiral there uh, for a little while, like it was super important that I saw him. And for a while there, I wasn't really seeing him. And I wanted to hide myself from him because I felt like I was not good enough to be around him sometimes. I felt that uh, I wanted to be better, like for him being my best friend and it hurt guys like it hurt that I wasn't around him and again this is not his fault at all we just need to make that abundantly clear but like those kinds of things like our real relationships our face-to-face connections have face-to-face value and they hurt when they're not there anymore yeah it's extremely important to have that face-to-face and to touch upon why we didn't see each other as much is you actually were working at the at the oil rigs yeah and so those I was are always very iffy when he took jobs like that because I I you go off five six hours away working fourteen hour days on a, like a a two month trip like it's like it's hard to be in contact because yeah. once you go to once you get home you'll do whatever for one or two hours and go to sleep and then repeat and yeah. so if if any of you guys are out there and you like are in this situation where you're going to be going to do a job that is maybe two weeks on two weeks off. Be wary that it may be difficult and that you need to put effort into trying to maintain those personal connections you have with your friends and family because we've established that it's not the money that's going to make you happy. It is your long lasting friendships and knowing that those people are going to be there for your downward spiral. They're going to be up, they're going to be there for you when you're on your upward spiral. Yeah, that they'll be there for you. That is what's important. Yeah, and I mean, you guys have already heard if you've been paying attention to like all of our episodes here about how close our friendship is and the ways we've helped each other get further along in life. And I know I'd still be further behind to this day if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for my parents, if it wasn't for certain people in my life that I can't ever be grateful enough for. Like, that's why that's why these relationships make us joyful, guys. Yeah. Um, but Again, when it when it comes to joy and everlasting joy, you may go, hey guys, okay, so you get we get it. There's like you can get joy from relationships, that kind of stuff. But how do you find a joy that lasts forever, our whole entire life on this earth? Yeah. Um, and this honestly might be a good question that we might have to pull Sid in here for a second. But one of the things that I want to say is the only way that I know of personally, and we can both attest to this, that you can find a lasting joy no matter what life throws your way is in a in a relationship with God. It's just yeah. there, I don't think there's any other way because you have to hold on to something that is eternal and everlasting that is bigger than yourself. And even though your family is great and wonderful and stuff, things can happen to them. Yeah. They can leave, they can get hurt. And again, I do not wish this upon any of you. I hope that your family and your marriages last to the day you die and that you love your kids and your kids love you to the day you die. But you cannot guarantee that. No, unfortunately, betrayal is a everlasting um, possibility in every relationship you have. Yeah. You can always have somebody who leaves you for whatever reason, your fault, their fault, or nobody's fault. Yeah. It could be illness, it could be circumstance, could be a new job somewhere else, um, could be differences between your personalities, but people sometimes just will prioritize their, their mission over you. Their mission, their happiness. And so you need to you need to find your joy in the sense that in in circumstances that will change around you in an ever changing world, in an ever changing landscape, that you can stay connected to something that matters to you yeah yeah and and that's why that's why we sit here and like we encourage you guys to look into this kind of stuff we're not here to shove it down your throat it's what's 
affected our lives and what what we view our our whole world through and so we encourage it but it's not required by any means yeah. uh, we still love and care for you guys no matter what kind of walk of life you guys come from yeah um actually Sid, did you want to pop in here real quick do you do you have you, you don't do you have, have do you have two cents on this not really it's something more i ponder so yeah fair enough he's a ponder that's i think that's where a lot of people are at they're they're at a point where like if if there hasn't been because like everybody has different reasons to believe everything yeah right you know some people face dramatic changes in their life and that's why they will turn to a relationship with god yeah and some people don't face that kind of stuff and maybe don't feel an, a need and yeah. me, me and my dad were actually just talking about this how everybody needs something different in life yeah. and that you can never look to one person's experience and say i'm gonna just i'm gonna just do that because yeah. your relationships are going to be different the people you know is going to be different and every aspect whether it's career or school or people it's going to be different for you if it happened in the past it's not going to happen the exact same way ever again like yeah. it, it just doesn't and so yeah if you guys didn't hear that sid's in the back and we kind of he's he's not a believer personally um he He's got his, his own walk and his own things going on. And we just asked him kind of what, how he felt about that. Cause obviously we're both Christians. We can only offer you guys our opinion through this lens. And yeah. he said more so it's something that he ponders. And so again, we encourage you guys to ponder, to wonder, to think, yeah. uh, to have a growth mindset and really explore that for yourselves. Uh, and again, let us know if you guys do have ideas on this. We would love to hear from I, you. Guys. I would be very interested to hear. It's it's incredible. Like we are we are thinkers, me and Brian both, and we enjoy learning and growing, and we want to know what you guys have to think. Yeah. So. Beautiful. What's next? Well, what time are we at? I don't know. Yeah, but That's... we got a bit to cut out here. Is there anything that we wanted to else to talk about? I think that was a pretty good ending. Yeah, I think that I think was so. that was like Caleb was just bang on the pop there awesome guys well uh i think we're gonna call that yeah, a wrap for good. week six guys thank you so much again for coming and joining us if you guys enjoyed the video if you enjoyed the podcast please follow us down below hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button it helps us so much guys we cannot thank you enough for the engagement that we've already had and we are going to keep on producing this kind of stuff for you guys we've got some Big things hopefully planned for the future. I know we got a few things planned for the future, yeah. but even bigger things to come, guys. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to be keep, uh, keep on encouraging your fellow men around you. Keep on building up your communities, guys. And always feel free to reach out to our uh, Instagram account and yeah. ask us any questions that you guys have. That is young men underscore the podcast. Nope. nope. Young I, men, men underscore podcast. podcast. Young men underscore podcast. There you go. On Instagram, go follow us. Hit us up. You guys, let us know what you're thinking. Thanks so much for being here with us. And we will see you guys in week seven. That was the most YouTube outro I've ever heard oh, Caleb give. Yeah. That was, was the like, what's up, guys? hit that button below. My name's Caleb. Hit the like button. Give us a like or subscribe. But that's almost what you need, actually.